Hey guys, it's Janice. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be trying some free iPad note-taking apps. They cost nothing to download from the App Store, although some of these do have upgrade options. So let's get started. The first one here is Flexel, which is apparently more well-established in the Korean community. From my first look at the features, it seems promising, although some basic features like images and text boxes are limited to the standard version, which you have to purchase. Upon entering the app, you're greeted with a pretty simple layout that kind of looks like a hybrid between GoodNotes and Notability. There's already some sample PDFs in there for you to try out the app. What surprised me was actually when you open a PDF, you can have a separate notebook laying on top of it for you to take notes while you're reading the book. I thought this was pretty clever because you can actually move the notebook around while reading. I think this is a pretty good alternative to split screen. It's definitely not a feature that you see in other note-taking apps. What's also great about it is that whatever you write on here also saves into its own file so that you can access it later without having the textbook open. On top is the toolbar. Pretty simple options that include writing tools, which you can easily switch between a pen and highlighter, as well as eraser, ruler, and a trig ruler. The pen tool is by default a ball pen, so it's not pressure sensitive. However, this is what I personally prefer just because the lack of pressure sensitivity actually makes my writing neater. One thing that bummed me out in terms of the note taking is that the highlighter actually covers the text even when you adjust the opacity, which is such a pet peeve of mine when it comes to note taking just because it makes the text less legible which defeats the purpose of highlighting in the first place. Sadly, some extremely basic features like changing paper templates and renaming notebooks is not available in the free version, and with the free version, you can only make up to five folders, which honestly sucks. So unless you don't like making folders or you just don't need them at all, this limitation might be a bit too limiting for effective organization. However, overall, I think that the free version of this app is a good starter for those who maybe have to take a lot of notes from textbooks just because of its neat note-taking feature that I haven't seen in any other note-taking apps. Of course, like I said, the free version does have some disadvantages like not being able to change paper template, which is such a basic feature to have, but it's worth a try if you're not picky about those things and you don't want to drop any money on good notes or notability. This next note-taking app is actually more art-focused, but I think it could be a good option for people who want to explore their creativity a bit more. This one is called Concepts. In terms of organization, this one is actually quite different in that instead of having folders and notebooks, you have projects and sections. At the top of my head, I can't really envision how you would organize your courses, so you would have to play around with that and kind of figure out your own system. So as you can see, when you enter the page, you get infinite paper. You can zoom in and zoom out as far as you want, which gives you a lot of space for things like mind maps, brain dumps, and illustrations. There's quite a few settings to choose before you start, and these settings actually remind me quite a bit of Procreate. So if you're also on the edge about Procreate, maybe you could look into this application as well. Now, at first glance, the toolbar seems really complicated. It's not really intuitive in my opinion. I had to play around with the different icons to know what tool I was actually selecting. I think that the artsy aspect really jumps out with this toolbar because it gives you a ton of brush options, not just pens, but also watercolor, which you could technically use as a highlighter as well. What is super appealing about this is the color palette, which offers Copic marker colors in a wheel format, and I think it's quite aesthetically pleasing. I think if you are someone who really likes to do a lot of illustrations and artsy stuff with your notes, you'll have a lot of fun with concepts. The paper template can be changed for free as well, and you can also change the background style. There is a lot more settings you can play with in terms of the Apple Pencil and gestures, which I won't get into detail about because there's just way too many. One disadvantage that you might consider is that because this app provides infinite paper, it might be tricky for those of you who want to print out your digital notes, but otherwise it seems like a pretty loaded app considering it's free. It's also got basic features like dragging and dropping photos in split screen, so you can easily shove some diagrams into your notes. 
The last app that I'm going to try in this video is Notes Writer. So when you first enter the app, you're greeted with all these sample notebooks that come with the app download. And I have to say, they kind of look atrocious, no offense. I'm not sure if these would appeal to the average student. And as you can see, the page does have ads on it, which can be totally distracting. And I'm assuming that the ads will be gone when you buy the premium version. When I first started a new notebook and wrote on it, I thought that the writing experience was actually pretty comparable to GoodNotes or Notability. Another surprising thing is that the highlighter actually goes under the text, which is a huge plus in my book. The toolbar reminds me of the toolbar that GoodNotes 4 had. Very similar icons, it's very simple, and I actually enjoyed this kind of interface relative to the one that we saw in Concepts. Other than that, it's got a pretty straightforward text box tool and shape drawing tool, although you do have to use a separate tool for the shapes. Now, I was decently impressed with this app until I stumbled onto the paper templates and wow, are they huge and are they limited? There's no paper sizes to choose from either. So you're kind of stuck with these pretty atrocious looking grid paper and lined paper templates. Most students I know who use an iPad like to use A4 paper, so I don't think these would satisfy a lot of students' needs. If you just like note taking on blank paper, then this might not be a problem for you. But overall, I think that this is a pretty straightforward note-taking app, but I wouldn't recommend it just because the interface is a little tricky to navigate. The paper templates suck, and there's not really any obvious organization system that students would find effective. I would recommend you to try at least Flexel or Concepts. Those seem like pretty decent note-taking apps. Let me know in the comments if there are any other free note-taking apps that you enjoy. I'd love to check them out. Thank you to Skillshare for partnering with me on this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands and thousands of fun classes where you can explore many different interests and expand your creative side for less than $10 a month with annual subscription. Skillshare offers a lot of opportunities for members to explore things like how to study effectively, how to plan and organize, etc. so you can improve yourself as a student. And a lot of these are short and easy to fit into any schedule. If it's not about studying, there's bound to be another class that will suit your interests just perfectly. The first thousand people to click the link in my description box will get two months free of premium Skillshare membership. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit the subscribe button. Here are some other videos from my channel that I recommend.